Hi, and welcome back to another Kohu Semiconductor Test Group Quick Tip. I'm Jeff Schlebach, and today we're going to look at how to set up and use Unison Runtime Characterization features, and in particular, the role performed by the Margin Tool and the Callback Entry Point. Runtime characterization can be integrated directly into a test program using any of the Unison supplied test methods that support characterization. No special coding is needed in your test functions, meaning you'll have more time for creating your actual tests. Unison test methods that support characterization have a dedicated characterization row as can be seen in the Unison supplied generic test test method. And if you don't see this row, make sure the show additional args is set to true. Included in this row is a characterization enable boolean cell and a characterization object argument which references a margin object. When characterization enable is set true, the method will execute the characterization object, a margin object, as if it had been run at a breakpoint. As an aside, if you plan on performing characterization often, this can be integrated directly into your test program and then enabled and disabled using an operator variable to toggle the characterization enable cell true or false. Turn this on or off as part of your on init routine or manually. Using the generic test test method makes it easy to insert one or more function call objects and easily gain access to all the Unison characterization features. In this example, I've created a function call object called myVDDVCC that calls a UTL function called VCC versus VDD. This function by itself provides no characterization. This is the same UTL function that is called in this test block. While you could add characterization capability to this function, if you wanted to place separate functions in multiple test blocks, there would be no way of registering all blocks in context to a single callback function. And this leads into a discussion about the role of the callback function. Each Unison test method that supports characterization provides building code that registers a callback with the system using a callback function Unison type as seen here. This tells the characterization handler what code to return to and what to execute. The callback entry point, execute rows in this case, is executed for each step of the variance when the program is executed. The callback function performs three steps. One, update all the setups. Two, execute the test again. And three, return the results. The results displayed are determined by the mode set in the margin tool. We can open that up by double clicking in a characterization object cell. Now as a reminder, the margin tool is used to define a list of one or more variances or shmoo objects placed in the rows of the tool. The enabled shmoo objects are executed sequentially. The margin tool supports two modes, normal, which returns a final value and allows for various search options like binary, linear, etc. And scan, which provides an ASCII one, two, or three dimensional schmoo plot in a data viewer or a file for further analysis. This is what we want when performing runtime characterization. So let's run this program and look at the characterization or schmoo results. You can see that the start, stop, and step size are reflected in the shmoo plot. The asterisks represent passing values, the dots are failures, and any illegal driver condition would be represented by an up arrow, often called the caret symbol. Note that the data viewer that captures the characterization IO stream is in this case named char data view. You may find it convenient to have your characterization data sent to a unique data viewer window to prevent your normal data from getting mixed together with the characterization results. In this example program, I created a separate data viewer that only displays the characterization stream. All the other streams are turned off. The results for each active site that passed are collected and displayed in this data viewer. This is different from the results you would get when running characterization at a breakpoint, because in that case, only the displayable site is shown. And that's all there is to using characterization at runtime. Oh, and by the way, there is much more information about characterization in the Unison help documentation. To find it, simply do a search for the term characterization. Have a look at this. 
And if you haven't already done so, make sure you watch another quick tip on this topic entitled Characterizing Your Device at a Breakpoint. In it, we discuss many of the other Unison tools involved with characterization. Take advantage of these resources and then get started using characterization in your test program today.